Hi, this is Brian with Profilos Media and Post. Today we're going to take a look at how we can set up a true 3D shadow catcher inside Fusion inside DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you're already familiar with Fusion and DaVinci Resolve, I'm going to put a timestamp below so you can skip forward to the end where I do a quick overview of the process that I'm using to set up a shadow catcher. Okay, so with that said, let's take a look at what we have here. So we have our clip which as we go through it, you can see this is a drone shot going through the mountains. I tracked this in Synthize and exported out a 3D scene, which I brought into Fusion, which you can see right here. So we have our 3D merge. We have our camera, our point cloud, a tracking mesh, which is a mesh built out of all the tracking points inside Synthize to match the ground. Then we have our camera renderer and media out. Inside Fusion, I've added a 3D text. Just add that in that I've already put into position. And I've added a spotlight, which I already put into position for our shadows. Now, one of the things that you could do for a shadow catcher is set it up in your 3D scene and use your 3D renderer to composite your shadow onto your original footage. But the problem with doing that is it gives you very limited options when it comes to compositing. So what I wanted to show you was how we can set up a true 3D shadow catcher and we'll set it up so that we have just the shadow and just the text and then we can composite those over the original image. So we're going to unhook the media and let's bring this over and merge it right after our camera renderer. And in that merge we want to swap the inputs so that our clip is in the background. Just organize that a little bit. One of the first things we should set up is in the camera renderer. We want to make sure that we're not in OpenGL. We want to make sure we're in software renderer. Then we want to go into our tracking mesh. And inside our tracking mesh, we're going to set up a few things. We need to go down to our lighting and click on shadow receiver. And then we're going to go into our material. And what we want to do is bring this to pure white. Because the operation we're going to use is we're going to turn this entire image to white except for the shadow. And then in this merge, we'll multiply our image against our original footage so it'll just be the shadow. Then after we change it to all white, we want to come down to where it says receives and we want to click off lighting, but then click on shadows. And now you can start to see the shadows. But we still have a couple problems here. We still have this part if we look at the arc. actual camera renderer we have this part here isn't white and we also have our text so let's take care of the first problem with the background let's grab a background node and let's make that pure white make sure these are all one and then add that into our camera okay now we're getting a full white screen but now we still need to get rid of the 3d text so if we go over to our 3d text and we go over to the shading tab there's an option in shading elements where it says opacity. And if we turn that down, you can see that we've gotten rid of the text, but the text is still inside the 3D scene and can cast a shadow. So now if we go over to our merge and we change our apply mode to multiply, now you can see that we actually have a true shadow catcher here inside Fusion. Now one thing I did want to mention is that Inside of 3D text, we do have the shading elements where you have the opacity. A lot of times you're going to be working with different kinds of objects like FBXs and Alembics. And the way that they come in, there's going to be a little bit different place for this opacity. So let's bring in a 3D shape and I just want to show you where to find that option. So everything else in this scene can stay the same. And let's make a cube put this up in the scene and let's make this and then uh, let's just bring this over so you can see it so if you have um, when you have a FBX or an OBJ or a Lembic scene that comes in you can just go into the materials and if you look in the diffuse you'll see you have the opacity option here and you can just turn it down and you get the same kind of results. I just want to show that to you because it's a little bit different than the 3D text. So I'm going to delete that. So now we have our shadow pass, but we want to 
put together the rest of our composite. So what we can do is let's select these three here. So we have our camera, our 3D merge, and our camera render. And let's copy that. And then we'll go down here and paste it. And this renderer is where we're going to have just the 3D text. So we're going to merge this over the top of that merge. And let's look through the final composite. So the spotlight can go straight into the 3D scene. The spotlight will be the same in both. But the 3D text is a little bit different because of this 3D text, we brought the opacity down so that we could just have the shadow pass. But what we can do is let's copy the 3D text and then paste an instance. And let's connect that instance into our 3D scene here because we want the translation, everything, color, rotation, all of that stuff to be exactly the same in both. But what we can do in this instance is we come over to the shading panel and under the opacity, if we right click on opacity, we can de-instance just the opacity. So everything else is gonna stay the same. These two will be exactly the same, just not the opacity. And we can bring that up. And so now we have our 3D text by itself rendered right here and then we can merge that over the top for our final composite and now that gives us a lot of room to be able to after this renderer do all kinds of things before we merge it in so we could blur this a little bit more we could add a little bit of grain to the text it gives us a lot more options for our compositing so let's do a quick overview of this process so we have our media in here then we have our shadow pass which is this section right here. And the way we got this shadow pass is that we added a background. And in this background, we made it pure white. We added that into our 3D camera. So the entire background is white. Then our ground plane, which is our tracking mesh. We went inside the tracking mesh. This is our shadow catcher. And we turned on shadow receiver, so it'll receive shadows. Then we went inside the texture of our, our shadow catcher, our tracking mesh. We made the diffuse pure white, so all the values are at 1. Then we turned off receive lighting and then turned on shadows to add shadows. We also made sure that in the camera renderer, uh, that our render type is software renderer. And then the 3D text we went inside the 3D text and we went to the shading tab and we just turned down the opacity of the shading so that the final render here, the 3D text won't show up in the render, but it'll still be used for the shadow pass. And then we took that and we merged it using the multiply operation over our original clip. Then down here, we copied the camera, the 3D merge, and the camera renderer from our shadow catcher and added it down here for our 3D text. Then we took our text from our shadow pass and instancing it. But in this instance of the 3D text, what we did is we de-instanced just the opacity and brought that up. So the translation and rotation and everything like that is still linked. Everything is linked between these two, just not the opacity. And we added that into our scene with the spotlight from our shadow scene so that everything matches up. And then we rendered that out and then brought it over the top for our final composite. So that's one way you can set up a true shadow catcher inside DaVinci Resolve Fusion. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you again in another video.